All right, learning to be uh, a good training partner. Um, a lot of times when you get started in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, you guys are going to have um, a couple of different training partners that you seem to uh, gravitate towards, and those should be your good training partners. Um, those guys should be interested just in as much uh, of your growth as their growth as well, because they know that that's going to help. Uh, your growth is going to help theirs and, and vice versa. And so for you to be a good training partner, um, I think that you have to be very interested in your training partner's growth as well. Um, and then also willing to help them out. So, you know, one good thing to do, or I should say, the, the biggest thing to do is not wrench on uh, any tic- you know, particular submission. You'll find once you've been training for a while that you can uh, go really hard and go really fast without actually out or without hurting anyone. Um, and that's a really nice thing to be able to do. Um, and But when you first start, for the most part, it's going to be uh, make sure that you take extra special care on, you know, not, if you get somebody in submission, not uh, trying to really wrench it and not trying to wrench anything or use excessive force really uh, for any particular sweep, submission, pass, anything like that. That doesn't mean, like I said, that you have to baby them, but at the same time, uh, you should be able to know the difference uh, between, okay, this was excessive and this was filled with anxiety or uh, this was, you know, done properly with with good pressure and, and, and things like that so I think that's a big difference people will see is you know there's a big difference between being dominating and pressuring and things like that and going hard um, you know like in the very beginning it seems like a lot of the uh, white belts because you know there's not a lot of um, skill there yet it's more anxiety and so when they grab something they're just going to completely wrench it uh, just to be able to say they got it you know it's kind of like being at the the last part of a a race and everybody's running everybody's running and then like somebody jumps at the very end uh, because they want to win uh, and, and like I said that really can't happen when you do it like I said make sure that you're going nice and slow um, that way you don't risk injuring the person uh, because you want like if you want that person to be your training partner um, you know like I said you you want to ensure that they um, they care about your safety you care about their safety vice versa um, past that once you've kind of got that baseline of okay I know that I'm not gonna get hurt by this guy um, then you want to talk about hey uh, you know ask them uh, are there anything that you're working on um, things like that to where when you get into certain positions maybe you know if they're working on something and still trying to figure something out maybe you put them into that position a couple times and let them work that uh, just to be a good training partner so sometimes maybe you'll allow them to, they're working on a pass we'll say Maybe you allow them to pass with that particular pass and you don't give much resistance for that particular time. Then the next time you do in there, you give a little bit of resistance um, and then more and more and more uh, just to help them kind of work through that particular position. And now it's going to make you better as well just because you're getting to rep that same thing, just the opposite end of it. Um, and, you know, you don't always allow them to uh, just completely do what they want to do because that's ultimately not helping them but don't give a hundred percent resistance on those particular things uh, because then that's going to make them feel like they're never going to be able to get it and that's not the case you've you know they've essentially given you the game plan of what they plan to do and you know it'd be like a football game if I said okay you know I'm going to go out here um, and I'm going to just try to continually run and we're going to do this pass this play and this play and this play um, if you knew exactly what I was going to do then that game would be shut down uh, but um, in this end if I tell you okay I'm gonna try to do this pass maybe this submission things like that and you help me when I go to the next person I don't tell them I'm a little bit better the next time for it um, and so I think you guys would probably want that in somebody else so you should want to be that for somebody else as well um, I think that's a, a huge thing people not understanding that even though this is an individual sport it's very much a group sport as well um, the fact that you can have multiple people uh, to get better with is going to be great I mean really you should have experts in almost any field You're, you know one of your training partners okay he's my takedown guy I know I'm gonna have a, you know a good uh, takedown session with him because maybe not everybody's gonna be a good uh, takedown person all right I know this guy's gonna be a good guard passer for me so I want to put myself in a uh, guard position and try to let him pass and me try to get uh, escape out of it Okay, I know this guy's really good at guard sweeps or whatever, and you know, trying to put this guy in your optimal position, so or his optimal position. So by the time uh, you've been through all those training sessions, you can kind of mold everybody together uh, into one, you know, particular person. Maybe you want to joke around and call it, you know, Captain Planet or whatever. You know, with these five powers combined, um, 
you're making one really, really good, um, solid person. And that's what you're going to have to do a lot of times if you don't have higher belts in your gym is take pieces from other people and do that. So like I said, maybe you can be that for somebody else as well. Um, but one way to do, uh, to make for sure that you're not going to have any training partners to train with is if you go completely hard with everybody, completely crazy, um, and you have no, um, uh, look, you don't look out for their well-being for the most part, and you don't try to help them. If you're always trying to help yourself, you're not going to have any training partners. Um, it, that's just the way that it works because everybody's going to decide that you know you're not um, a good person to work with, if you will. And then the other thing that I would say is make sure that you uh, try to stay clean as much as possible. Try not to stink because nobody's going to train with the stinky guy either. So that's how to be a good training partner. Uh, hopefully you guys like it.